Beautiful. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is such a podcast question. Let me ask you this. <laughs> wow. Well, well, let, let me ask you this. Um, yeah. What is the future of the Novus Ordo in the Roman Rite? If, in, oh. a, in America. Yeah. No, if, I, if I can you, tell you that right okay. now. Uh, <laughs> no. I, I don't know. I don't know because... Um, have you ever read... And I wonder how insulting a question like that must be to a faithful priest who celebrates... I don't mean to be offensive. I don't think it's offensive. Yeah. I think this is the question that we're all asking okay. since Traditionis Custodis, since yeah. Pope Benedict allowed the extraordinary and ordinary form. The 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 Latin rite was never... The Roman rite was never... Um, was never told to stop being performed, right? And so people who flock to the Latin mass were flocking to some that's our inheritance. The fact that it's like 11 to 13 percent of the original prayers of the Latin mass were preserved into the Novus Ordo. The Novus Ordo wasn't finished when it was proclaimed. Now, I'm not a part of some, I'm not a rad trad. I'm not a part of some radical Latin community or anything. I don't go to Latin mass. I haven't been to it in years. So I I don't have a dog in that hunt in particular. But the reality is Eucharistic prayer number two was written in haste. Right, it was written. Half of it was composed in uh, a, an Italian restaurant right before it was approved. There was a lot of duplicity involved in it, but the biggest shock of it, right, was the actual address of Saint Paul the Sixth on uh, in in 1969 to the Italian bishops, the Italian faithful, right before Advent, and it was this famous address that he gave where he said, "Okay, it's happening." And he goes through, and it's it's not a very long letter, and he goes through and he explains the things that are going to happen because of it. You're not going to like the fact that Latin is going away, and you know, blah, blah, blah. And he lists a whole bunch of stuff. And the first maybe, I'm going to say it's like you know a four-paragraph intro, and then a six-paragraph, here's all the horrible things that are going to happen. And then it's like somewhere around paragraph 11, 12, 13, where mm -hmm. he's like, but this is the reason why, the evangelization of the nations. Now let me ask you. Have the nations been evangelized by the Novus Ordo? Hmm. That's a big question. It, I, I mean, is it really a, statistically? I, <laughs> I, well, it's a big question because I grew up in Australia and now I live here. Yeah. I don't I don't see... You see more or less people going to Mass than you did in the 50s, 60s, 70s. No, I, I'm with you. I, I'm just trying to give... Like, if I just base it on my account and not mm -hmm. anything I've heard or read... Yeah, I live in a different epoch, don't I? I mean, I grew up in a a kind of lazy fair, uh, yeah, nervous auto community that was. But is that a feature or a bug? Right. See, this is the thing: is when you go to those Novus Ordo communities that take the tradition seriously, yeah. they they do what I think I want to say. It's general instruction on the Roman Missal, paragraph forty two. I think that's what it is. Where basically says the the key to interpreting all this stuff is the mm -hmm. Roman Rite. So if you don't know what's going on, grab the Roman Rite and do that. Right? How many places yeah. do that? How many churches have communion patents when you receive Holy Communion? Right. You know, how many places do the the you know all all the different things that happened during the Latin Mass? And you realize, well, that's a, a fraction of a fraction of a percent. Mm -hmm. This is the question: is is the weeks? Uh, how did you phrase like the the happy go lucky Novus Ordo yeah, experience? Yeah, the laissez faire. Laissez faire. Of, yeah. Right. Any anything goes. Um, is that the Standard, or is that the exception? No, that's the standard. That's the standard. Yeah. And then the question is, why? Right? See, that's the thing that kills me. I'm not saying uh, in plea. Okay, this is the part of the disclaimer of the podcast where I say, just like Scott Hahn said in, in your interview with him, I do not believe that Novus Ordo is evil or wrong or demonic or not the sacrifice of Christ on the cross or any of that stuff. Okay, I believe it's a worthy and a good mass and when celebrated correctly. At the same time, what we lost in the transition, right? There was a, a, a middle ground in 1967 of a missile that took into account uh, Sacrosanctum Concilium from Vatican II mm -hmm. and tried to preserve the very best of the Roman Rite. Because they didn't think they were getting rid of the Roman ritual from the, the Tridentine mm -hmm. Mass. They didn't think they were doing that at all. By 69, they did. And they said, what's gonna happen? Men are gonna leave the church. Have men left the church? Mm -hmm. They laughed when they said that. Wow. Yeah. Latin's going to disappear. Latin's going to disappear. Latin's never going to disappear. Latin disappeared. Reverence for the Eucharist is going to go away. Has reverence for the Eucharist gone away compared to a, a, a Latin mass? So for me, joining the ordinary is not joining a reactionary group anti-Novus Ordo. We have the Novus Ordo lectionary. We have you know all sorts of stuff. 
it is seeing the best of the English tradition, which is incredible. Mm -hmm. That as an Irishman, I don't want to give credit for. <laughs> Crap. I do not at all want to give credit for. But in seeing it and, and actually starting to study it, the Newmans and before, you realize like there is a cultural heritage here that is worth preserving. So what's the future of the Novus Ordo in America, do you think? Uh, I think, uh, well, not one, I think the people who are most serious are going to join Latin communities mm -hmm. or they're going to join the Ordinariate or they're going to join Eastern communities. That's what I think, I too. think, I think people are exhausted over, I, I, the people who are listening to me who are like, well, but, uh, I think we're all exhausted from the liturgy war, but we're not getting help, right? Our experience at the universal church is the local priest. And if his experience and training, right, we, we fall to the level of our training, we don't rise to the occasion. If his training in seminary was everything before 1967 or 65 was evil or inadequate, then, then he has a hostility to tradition. So what's the hope in building that up? You know, there's a famous story of, of these um, Cyril Malabar Indian nuns. There was a, a, a rite that was, they were buried according to the Novus Ordo. And these Cyril Malabar nuns who were serving, they're by ritual and they're serving at this church. They're burying this man, and a lot of people were there at the parish, and they, they felt deeply saddened. And the nuns began a chant in the Cyril Malabar tradition. And every person in the room just or in at, at the gravesite just froze. And no one moved. No one left. Because they realized something holy is happening here. And this is what sacred music is. Mm -hmm. Sacred music is things that come from the liturgy and are for the liturgy. Religious music is things that come from our religious experience and is to foster our religion, but not necessarily the liturgy. And so chant and all these things, they're all meant mm -hmm. to be something that that builds up and aggrandizes the glory to God, not like building a bridge for me and all that stuff. Well then, in order for dioceses to exist and to remain, are they going to have to either get serious? What, what are they going to have to do? Like if you're a bishop right now and yeah. you're overseeing a particular diocese, is there a future for the Novus Order as it is? I think there is a future, but not as it is. Not a, not as it is in the lackadaisical, hey, come one, come all, let's do this. Like, no, no, there's no future in that. Because, yeah. okay, so this is what we did. So here's the secular world and most of our people are there. Right. And here's the church. Here's heaven. Here's yeah. the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. So the church is, is we're going to build a bridge. And that, that was the intention of Vatican II. We got to meet modern man mm. where modern man is in order to bring him to where the kingdom of God is. But this is what we did. We then moved the church to the bridge. Right. I mean, think about Matt Marr. I love Matt Marr personally, physically. No, <laughs> I love Matt. Matt had this line where he talked about why did he write mass parts that have a little bit of Latin? <laughs> I hope that becomes the clip. The, that's a clip. That's a clip. Sure. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, I asked him before the show to say one ridiculous thing for a short. Oh, that's that's barely it. That's yeah. barely it. Buckle up. But he said, like, I use Latin and, and English, right? When he does, on you stay, you take away, mm -hmm. you know. He said, uh, because the goal, the, the highest ideal of the church is chant in Latin, which is unaccompanied by music. So when I do the Agnus Dei, I do it a little bit of Latin, a little bit of English, and my band, we drop out. So you sing it in, in, the, in the Latin, your unaccompanied singing. To me, that's a bridge. That's saying, hey, here's the contemporary music that you like, because Matt Marr's badass. Here's chant that you've never heard, and so it's difficult. So let me build a bridge. Okay. But what for most churches, they move the church to the bridge and they just live there. There is no bridge. It's it. It's done. We're, we're going to do rock and roll Jesus and that's all we're ever going to do. Mm. Good luck. You know. And so the problem is when we ape the culture, why are we shocked that most of our people leave the church for the culture? Why are we shocked at that? We are hemorrhaging people. So would you like to see the current Novus Ordo... I mean, have you been to a Novus Ordo Mass at Orientum, Ultra oh, Rails, so many. celebrated in Latin? Yeah. They're beautiful. Is yeah. that what you would want to see happen? Yeah. Is that what but, you but think? But is that the standard? See, that's the problem is what would take to get it the standard? Half of the people, uh, almost all the people in almost all the churches in America would leave. Mm -hmm. Would leave the church if it went to Latin Novus. Uh, you do <laughs> at Orientum, I, I guarantee you a, a fifth of the people will leave the church. And we had a guy who was so angry that kind of sort of the back of the chair of the priest blocked some people out. How dare you? I thought this was an inclusive church. And it's like, it's, a, it's a kind of a church in the round. Some, some people are going to be blocked. Is no. there a point in which, though, we just have to 
bishops and priests are going to have to bite that bullet yep. for the sake of good liturgy. Yeah. I think two things yeah. would enhance reverence to the Eucharist in the current Novus Order. Ad Orientum and altar rails. You do this. And a third is communion patents. Not sure. one crumb should touch the floor. No, of course. Yeah. I mean, think about, think about that catechetically. Yeah. Not one crumb should touch the floor because this is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. Altar rails. You and I should receive on our <coughs> knees before our Unless Lord. Unless you're in the East, but totally. <laughs> you should receive with a spoon. Right, what do they call the spoon? True. What do they call it? I don't know. Oh, <coughs> you're so Ukrainian. you got to come up with a Ukrainian or a... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, but, but what's the idea behind that? Is the priest's hands are consecrated specifically to give you the Eucharist in, in a certain mode, mm -hmm. right? We offer the holy sacrifice of the Mass, and then we give you Holy Communion. You are coming forward to the altar. You're coming forward to the sanctuary. You're coming forward to heaven. This is a pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. So in, in the West, you fall on your knees, which is a sign of not just penance, which it is in the East that we share in the East, but also a sign of adoration. Yeah. I'm on my knees before the Lamb of God. So I surrender everything, and I receive, so not I, I take. Yeah, I think at this point, there would be people who would attend the Latin mass and go okay this is I, I appreciate the fact that you're trying to increase the reverence but you're not going nearly far enough what you have to agree to is that all of the modern uh variations that have crept into the liturgy have to be killed we have to admit that this was all one big mistake and just go back so here's what I actually think okay so if, if, if I'm viewing this whole so thing the idea is you're not enlightened enough you're not yeah. yet yeah, you're, all enough. modern, all yeah. modernism, all the turns are, are wrong turns. A lot of people who were alive in the 50s and 60s and talk about the church at the time say, I never heard about a loving God. <clears throat> you and I have never not heard about a loving God, right? <laughs> Too much. Too much. Like, gosh, <laughs> I get okay. It. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. God is love. But is he? Uh, yes, he is. But the, the, the idea of it is, what if we went through this to recover the essential nature of God? The God is for us, not against us. That God the Father actually desires that all should be saved. That Jesus Christ died and poured his blood out for you and for the many, for the forgiveness of sins. So what if this time of, you could say, softening of the church's justice and, 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 and strict um, rubricization and all that stuff. What if it was a time to say, hey... Like, like the letter to the church in Ephesians and book of Revelation, you've forgotten your first love. You got all these things that are wonderful, but you've forgotten your first love and you're going to go to hell for all eternity because you've forgotten that. That's my paraphrase. Uh, what if you have everything perfect? Th this is the thing. What if your Latin mass is 100% perfect, but you don't love people and you don't love God? You're going to go to hell forever. So what if God is willing to pull back? Mm. And now this is just me sheer conjecture so that if we return you know uh dr kwasniewski's uh the once and future mass right what if we return mm. to the latin mass but we don't abandon the love that we have that we recovered right because so many people i mean my parents were like you know you never heard of the love of god it was all judgment 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 so what if we had the love of god in the latin mass then all of a sudden the things that are actually in the Latin Mass. And this is the thing you find about Latin Mass communities. They go out of their way. Like you look at the, the Mass for the Ages uh, mm -hmm. videos. Yeah. Like they're going out of their way to point out these things. Look at the love of God in every verse and every paragraph. You repent because God loves you and he's merciful. You don't repent because I'm a judge. Right? Like you repent because he's merciful and he loves you. Mm -hmm. Right? So if, if that recovers with the Latin Mass, don't you think the church would be amazing? Yes. And that's what the ordinary it is to me. <laughs> yeah. This clip was sponsored by Hallo, and I have to say it's very easy to promote these guys because their app is probably the best app I've ever used. Not just Catholic-wise, but just all apps ever. If you want to grow in your prayer life, if you want to learn how to meditate, if you want to listen to excellent Catholic audiobooks, you can't go past Hallo. Go to hallo.com slash Matt, sign up over there, and you will get access to the entire app for, uh, for free for three whole months. So what do you got to lose? Here's the answer. 